Uh, hey, Coach Glenn Wesco, 247. I guess when's the uh, the timeline for when you guys start preparing for Florida State? Has that already started? I mean, just what's what's that look like in terms of – um, the, the Today and tomorrow we'll, we'll do some – a little bit of uh, Florida State, but we're not, you know, fully into a Florida State practice. Um, I'd say Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you know. I think, you know, probably – you know, when you, when you break down, like, preparation, for me, I look at, like, a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in season, and we'll do that twice. So we've got plenty of time. Um, so I would say probably Thursday, Friday this week, we'll begin to really focus on Florida State. Hey, Coach, when you've talked about the running backs, you said the experience will rise to the top or typically kind of typically. separate. I could be wrong. I've been wrong, as you guys know, many, many times. Well, is Caleb Jackson maybe kind of changing that thinking? And kind you of know, he had a good day, but, I, you know, you, you've seen this many, many times, um, and I have as well. You know, we tend to overreact to, you know, these kinds of situations. Uh, was that a product of bad tackling, uh, and, and, or was that great running, right? Maybe it's a little bit of both. Now, let's not take anything away from the kid. He's done a really good job. But there, there are other facets that he's going to have to continue to work on. We are really excited about his future here. But there's, there's clearly more work to be done. We also saw Sage Ryan at, a, at cornerback uh, yeah. during the scrimmage. First of all, has he been able to get back on the practice field? And then just what do you all like about him maybe at that cornerback spot? Well, he has elite speed. I mean, he's a guy that can run in the high 21 range. So, uh, you know, he's got the skill, um, you know, to, to have the kind of speed to play out there. The second thing, uh, experience, you know, and at that cornerback position, that's the one area that, that we're calling for experience. And I think the third is uh, he's a pretty smart football player. So he puts himself in a pretty good position. One thing that we really are concerned about is, is making sure that we tackle the football and having a great tackler out there. Um, Sage has been a really steady tackler for us. So he, he brings a lot of those traits to that position um, and, and gives us flexibility to you know, put a guy that's played a lot of football out there that runs really well and can tackle uh, in a position to help us. Follow up on him, and then I have another question. Sage's uh, injury, is he, is he back on he the He practiced track? today. Practiced today? Okay, great. Yeah, he, it was, I think, um, you know, more of a, you know, kind of a, a stinger, if you will. Uh, I don't know the exact. What did you like in the scrimmage that you saw, and what were some of the things that you're kind of still concerned about? Um, you know, I, I, I thought that uh, – you know, overall, you know, what we were looking for more than anything else was, you know, who are the guys that um, need to be developed to be guys to count on? And, and who are the guys that are not ready to be counted on yet that need more time um, to develop? And so it was, it was much more in that fashion than it was, uh, you know, I like this or I didn't like that. This was much more about... Uh, you know, 53. This was much more about um, finding out, uh, you know, defensively, you know, who, who else can we get on the field at the jack position? Um, you know, is, is, is Whit Weeks getting closer to, to playing? You know, uh, can Stamps hold up at, at corner? And, and all those became positive for us. And, and so I think we were looking for those kinds of answers. And then on the other side, you know, who needs more work? You know, who needs to continue to, to develop? And I think that that's kind of, you know, how we looked at the scrimmage. Hey, Coach, uh, at least last week, uh, Marni, Armani Goodwin, Logan Diggs, and Joshua Williams were kind of, um, I'd say, limited in practice. Are, are they okay to? Uh, they practiced to today for the okay. first time. So we, we had a full. We had a full complement of uh, running backs out there today. And uh, real quick, mentally and sort of when it, when it comes to his football IQ, uh, with Harold Perkins, what has he sort of learned or, or something that he had trouble with 
last year that he now is, I guess, I guess sort of mastered. Like, what are some examples of that actual growth mentally? Well, quite frankly, we didn't we didn't drill down on the nuances of the position. We moved them around to be an edge player for us. Um, quite frankly, you know, we felt like we wanted to take advantage of his athleticism when we put him in positions to really go get the quarterback. Um, so there was really nothing that um, he didn't do. Uh, he picked up the schemes from week to week. Um, this was really about, you know, learning, you know, pass coverages and gap responsibilities and things that we really didn't spend a lot of time with him. But he's got a, a great football IQ. Um, he's really, um, I would say, from a, a pass coverage, he's got great sense uh, in pass coverage zone and obviously man. Um, and, and understands gap integrity. Um, he's not running around there just, you know, uh, trying to make plays uh, on athleticism. So we've been very pleased with, with his, his football IQ. Uh, Coach, Chris Hilton's dealt with a lot of injuries mm -hmm. high school and here. Um, the hope is he's finally poised for maybe a breakout season. What are you seeing out of him in camp so far? I think he's had a really good camp. I think he's been more consistent. Uh, and one of the consistencies is staying on the field, as you mentioned, Jacques. He's been injured, uh, but he's, he's been healthy. He's made every practice. So I think that in itself is huge progress for him. Um, and I think he's been more consistent catching the football. You know, he was inconsistent. Um, so staying healthy, catching the football, because we all know about, you know, the, the other things, and that is that he can run. Um, so, um, I, I'd say that uh, he's taken the, the proper strides forward that we are all happy for him. Coach over here. Uh, Matthew Bruner with on three. Zaylin's heard. How have you seen him progress throughout the fall? And uh, do you see him pushing for maybe a starting position, or is there still work to do? Well, he certainly has developed, uh, you know, just the understanding of the offense in itself from terminology to technique to – you know, it's college football. He's going to, you know, there, there, there were guys he went against last year that, you know, quite frankly, there was, there was mismatches, you know, maybe 80% of the time, 90% of the time, maybe 99% of the time. Um, so now, now he's going up against Savion Jones, and he's going up against some, some pretty uh, impressive football players. So that's a whole new thing for him to deal with. So the rigors of that, right, you know, each and every day, um, so he's going through a lot of that. Um, but is he pushing for a starting position? Um, he's, he's a guy that, you know, we're giving, you know, reps to, you know, he's, um, we got to find the best five guys and then the next is the sixth and seventh. So he's in the mix and he's, uh, he's out there competing hard. Hi, uh, Coach Kelly, right here. Jacob yes, Vernon from the Verdon Verdict. Uh, when will there be a decision made on what player will be wearing jersey number seven and jersey number 18? Um, you know, we've given it great thought, um, and it's certainly something that uh, I know a lot of people are um, anticipating. I would say probably by the end of this week we'll, we'll have some kind of announcement. Hey, Coach, uh, over here, uh, James Jerm from Grill Iron Football. Um, Zion Alexander, he had a really good fall scrimmage as well the other day. Uh, just what have you really seen from him and just making that transition from the FCS at Southeastern to LSU? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the first thing um, is he's a guy that's uh, trustworthy. Um, you know, does the little things the right way. Um, he's... Uh, He's a guy that takes care of his work off the field, um, on time, reliable. Uh, those traits, you know, uh, as we know, they're transferable. And, and so at that position, you know, that's what you're looking for. And then he brings length, athleticism. Um, and uh, we've seen him be a guy that's not afraid to stick his nose in there, um, even though he played quarterback in high school. and. Um, he is physically, you know, developing um, and getting stronger. Uh, we like his willingness to, um, to go in there and, and, and want to tackle. And I think we saw on Saturday he, he's got the, 
the nose for a football too. When it's in the air, he's going to go up and find it, and he can catch it. Brian, when we talk maybe broadly about the offense, it sounds like one of the things y'all are focused on is trying to get more explosive um, as an offense after being very, very efficient last season. But how do you sort of value or, or balance efficiency versus explosiveness so maybe you don't always have a bunch of drives with a few plays and you're able to maybe give your defense some rest? Like, How do you just sort of strike that middle ground, I guess? It, it, or where do you want that to be? Yeah, so, you know, explosiveness sometimes is is – is looked at as, you know, a play that has to be thrown, you know, 20 yards down the field. You know, it, it could be, you know, making sure that you get the ball into the hands of your dynamic playmakers. Um, and, and tactically, you know, setting it up as such that, that they touch the ball um, enough that, that you can get explosive plays out of them. And sometimes, you know, I remember, you know, you know, looking at, you know, Alabama's offense in 2020, um, and you know, their their receivers weren't necessarily always pushing the ball down the field. It was just flipping the ball out on the perimeter, and they were turning them into explosive plays. So, you know, explosive plays to me certainly are about pushing the ball down the field, but it's also about getting the ball into your your playmakers' hands, and that's going to be. Both of those things, you have to balance those because you can't just keep pushing the ball down the field and find yourself, you know, staring at third and ten every time. How are we doing today? Excellent? Great. Everybody looks like they had a couple of days off and um, happy for everybody. That's great. It'll be 105 tomorrow. We'll be back at it. So uh, we'll let you know how that goes.